I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. I was just about to turn 13 when, in 1959 when the Mercury 7 astronauts were introduced to the country. And many times they would not go off, but my mother would get up and bring me hot chocolate as I sat in front of our old uh, TV waiting for hours and hours, hoping that the launches would actually happen. And, and seeing even from some of the earlier unmanned suborbital rocket launches, how thin that layer of atmosphere is that surrounds the Earth, it, it really put humanity in a whole new perspective, that we are really tiny in this universe and we're on a fragile little planet. Report. This is astronaut Edward White as he stepped from the Gemini 4 craft into space. He and James McDivitt then flew on for four days, completing our longest space trip yet. I don't think there's any way to discount the excitement of having um, humans involved for inspiring the next generation of explorers to get involved in science, math, and engineering. Having people up there and having them be able to describe what it felt like, the smells, the textures, that's what it's really about. I, I really believe it's important to um, advance our human experience by exploring, that it's that sense of adventure. It's almost like you know, back in the pioneer days, we had these people that weren't happy just staying in the Eastern United States. They had to come west and see what was out there and, and what life could be like and try and make a better life or a different life for themselves. I look at these kids with their restless faces, grandchildren of the pioneers. That proud, searching spirit that drove men out along new trails, is it still alive in them, in me? You know, things that you don't know, things that you've never seen before, and wanting to know about them, and wanting to push that frontier, that's the kind of people that you want on these kind of missions. I do think that our future is dependent upon space travel, and that is dependent on the people's interest in space travel. The idea of space is economically, we don't spend one penny in space, it's all spent on the Earth. And the technologies are tremendous. Our human space program is absolutely gonna go forward. We're gonna be launching more people. We're gonna have the ability for, for people who are not professional astronauts, more opportunities for people to travel to space. There is increasing interest in this idea of going either back to the moon or perhaps to an asteroid or to Mars. There's a lot of public excitement right now and interest in the idea of missions to Mars. And with this increased interest, maybe we can keep moving forward. If everyone really wants to go to Mars or to go to the moons of Jupiter, it will happen. It's just what people are focused on and what they find interesting at the time. We, we haven't gone farther than the moon, and that's pretty far, but Mars is much farther. And when we start thinking about maybe permanent settlements off the Earth and not returning, that is a very different thing to consider. It's going to take a lot of adjusting to that idea and kind of learning how to think about that. The year 2020. The moon has been explored and colonized, and the next space goal is about to be reached. The first landing by man on the planet Venus. We are now gathering all possible data in preparation for landing. However, no observation from orbit can let us know the answer to the most important question we've come to ask of Venus. Does life in any form exist on this planet? And if so, what kind? I've been a science fiction fan all my life as well, so 
I, I think it's a very important part of it. And it goes back to Jules Verne envisioning uh, technology with the Nautilus submarine and the first um, trips to the moon. The core question is, is that, is it space that catches people's imagination or is it humans in space? Is it the human aspect that when they think of a colony on Mars, a battle in space, what does this mean to us? Are, are we going to travel out there? Probably the best way right now is through movies because a lot of people go to movies. There's a lot of interest right now in space travel and sort of believable science fiction. Then I think that will really help capture the imagination of, of the public. So there is a blurring between the reality and the science fiction. Because we can see a science fiction movie about going to Mars doesn't mean we've been to Mars, but it can give us an idea that, wow, if we actually go there, it's gonna be amazing. So lots of people ask me, you know, why would I wanna go out there to Mars to die? And I tell them, no, I'm not going out there to die. I'm going out there to live. Because for me, that is truly living being on the frontier and doing something that I can hardly believe is real. That's what I want to do. I come from an industry that dreams for a living. Together we must, for our kids and our nation's long-term future, think big. We have to embrace renewed discussion of a mission to Mars and a permanent human settlement on the moon. We have to tell the nation about the incredible discoveries that have already come out of the 83 shuttle missions. When you next look up into the night sky, don't just see the past and sigh about the risk and the grandeur of what we did up there. Instead, look again and see the future. See the importance of investing in thinking and talking about living and learning from the great place that we call space. <laughs>